Hello everyone and good day. So in this uh, afternoon we will gonna talk about the chematose heterophase heterophase. So we will gonna know what is this organism and how it will transmit it from one organism to other organism, its pathology, the life cycle of this trematode at heterophase, and also how it diagnosed and how it be, will be treated. And we're gonna look the uh, picture of the adult heterophase. So uh, let's start with this. What is this organism? So this organisms belong to the kingdom Animalia, with the family of Heterophagidae, and the genus of Heterophase, with the order of uh, Plagiocada, and the class of Rhabdicopora, the species of H. Heterophase, and the phylum of Platyhelminthes. So, this heterophase, heterophase was discovered by Theodore Maximilian Belhards in 1851, where this parasite was found during the autopsy of the Egyptian mummy. So, this H. heterophase is an organism that can cause the disease known as the uh, heterophiasis. So, this found primarily in both the near and far east as well as the part of Africa. So the definitive hosts are human and other mammals and in the intermediate host where this heterophase live are the snail and the second intermediate host are the fish. So how this this is transmitted from one organism to other organisms? So where can we get this disease? The uh, heterophiasis disease. So, uh, we can get a transmission of either of these two diseases happen when uh, the, the uh, uncooked and that inadequate cooked fish are eaten. For example, is kanang magkilaw or kanang ihap cook lang a fish. Uh, this fish, uh, um, this fish, kanang bitong mga freshwater fish, and then. They are common in North Africa, Asia Minor, Korea, China, Japan, Taiwan, and even here in the Philippines. It was a uh, common disease. And the carrier of this H. heterophase are mud snails. In Egypt, they called it Seretediopsila conica. And in Japan, they called it Seretedia singula. So these uh, mud snails are the carrier of this heterophase, which I mentioned. So the most infected snails were found in the Nile Delta compared to the Delta. And then the carrier is the mud snails. So uh, this, this transmission now can occur from snail to uh, the fish. So how it work well, how it happened. So now we can uh, we can discuss the pathology of this uh, thematode head H heterophase. So each worm can cause mild inflammatory reaction in the intestine when heavy infection cause damage to mucosa and produce intestinal pain and mucosa diarrhea. So now when the egg now will enter the blood and lymph vascular system through mucosa go into the ectopic side of the body, the heart can be affected. So the, th the tissue reaction in the valve and myocardium uh, that cause heart failure. And when this egg can enter the brain or spinal cord, it causes neurological disorder and sometimes fatality. So it's really that, not that quite little illness but it will going to be fatal no so the intestinal infection that caused with this uh chematode H heterophase called heterophiasis which I mentioned so it will going to infect uh the intestinal crypts 
and then can cause acute to chronic inflammation, atrophy, fusion, and shortening of the intestinal veil. So this infection will going to inhibit or infection will inhibit the apoptosis which can cause a decrease in Kupke's tree and NFGB. So this Kupke's tree and NFGB are the proteins that are essential to induce programmed cell death of apoptosis. And how it cycles, so how does this H heterophase or matured so the life cycle of this. So first is the adult flock leaf barrowed where between the veil of the host small intestine. So it takes four to six hours for the H heterophase to get into the small intestine of the host. So the egg or lead contain a mirosidium. So this mirosidium it will not going to be hatched when until they are indigested with a snail or the mad snail. Then the mirosidium becomes a sporocyst. So in, inside the snail goes and begin to produce redi, redi, redi. So redi produce the carry, carry, which can exit the snail. So it's still going to swim toward the surface of the water and slowly fall back down. So on their way down, uh, when the contact with the fish and penetrate into the epithelium of the fish, the con the cercariae uh, insist in the mus muscle tissue. It will affect now the second intermediate host where the freshwater fish and then the definitive host, a natural host, will get infected too. So, what, uh, who is this definitive host, a natural definitive host? So, the definitive host are the human and birds. And then, who mostly uh, eat the undercooked or raw meat of the fish. And then, the natural definitive host are the cat, dogs, foxes, and other. And then, how uh, the epidemiology? So people at high risk of this infection are those fishermen. So usually they are people who are eating raw fish. People near uh, live near lake shores and river banks, and the people with the common practice of this deficit. So how it was diagnosed and the treatment. So the diagnosis done by stool examination is difficult when adult worm is not present because the eggs are hard to distinguish from C. sinensis. So, how it was treated? So, it, they are using praziquantel. So, a praziquantel is a uh, quinoline derivative. And the effect of this praziquantel of H. heterophase can cause depletion of their tegument and when exposed uh, over a longer period of time, it will lead to deeper so, uh, this image was an adult egg of a H. heterophase trematode. So, this, uh, this have a oral sucker, the firing, the intestine, the central uh, sucker, the uterus, and also the ovary. And it, this adult egg, uh, Usually sizes uh, range into 1.0 to 1.7 millimeter times 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 millimeter. So that's end my report. Thank you for listening and God bless us all.